Earlier this summer, a few of us from the Steamboat Institute had the privilege of getting, of getting a sneak peek preview of the new Victims of Communism Museum in Washington, D.C. This tour was made possible by Dr. Elizabeth Edward Spaulding, who was vice chairman of the Victims of Communism Memorial Foundation. Uh, she's founding director of the Victims of Communism Museum and a senior fellow at the Pepperdine University School of Public Policy. I encourage all of you to take time to visit the Victims of Communism Museum exhibit, which is out here in the foyer, and to be sure to visit this museum next time you're in our nation's capital. I can promise you it's well worth the visit. Dr. Spaulding is a frequent lecturer on US foreign policy, the presidency, communism, and the Cold War, and is also a core faculty member in VOC's National Seminar for Middle and High School Educators. We were honored that Dr. Spaulding spoke at our first annual leadership summit for our Emerging Leaders Council in Washington, D.C. last fall. Dr. Spaulding is the author of The First Cold Warrior, Harry Truman, Containment, and the Remaking of Liberal Internationalism, She's also the co-author of A Brief History of the Cold War and is currently at work on a history of world communism. Dr. Spaulding holds a PhD and an MA in international politics and political theory from the University of Virginia and a BA in political science from Hillsdale College. A third generation anti-communist, she lives with her family in Arlington, Virginia, including our board member, Dr. Matthew Spaulding. Let's give a warm welcome to a good friend of the Steamboat Institute, Dr. Elizabeth Spaulding. And I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget the men who died, who gave that right to me. Good morning, Steamboat. Good. You're better than my students. <laughs> uh, isn't communism a thing of the past? Isn't communism a theory that just hasn't been tried correctly? What do you mean by the victims of communism? Communism really wasn't that bad, was it? Well, as this audience knows, Communism is evil, wrong, and unfortunately, still alive and well. But many visitors to the brand new Victims of Communism Museum in Washington, D.C. know neither the painful history nor the present dangers, neither the deadly ideology nor the destructive legacy. More than 100 million, more than 1.5 billion. These are the numbers that we want everyone to remember when they walk out the doors of the Victims of Communism Museum back onto McPherson Square, just a couple of blocks from the White House in the heart of the nation's and the free world's capital that annually attracts over 20 million domestic and international visitors. The first figure points to the more than 100 million people who have been killed by communism for more than a century now. The second figure signifies the more than 1.5 billion people currently living under communist regimes in China, North Korea, Vietnam, Laos, and Cuba. Both numbers continue to grow. These numbers underscore the central truths. Communism is the ultimate ideological, centralized, dictatorial, one-party state, proving Lord Acton's dictum that absolute power corrupts absolutely. Communism crushes the individual, the family, the community, and the nation state. Communism oppresses, deprives, enslaves, and kills. Communism is the deadliest and costliest ism in modern history. These numbers and these central truths provide the core around which the Victims of Communism Museum's themes, 
timelines, and exhibits are built. Our focus is all the victims of communism, past, present, and unfortunately future, and their battle, as well as our own, against communism. In this sense, the Victims of Communism Museum is about both the past and living history. For living history, after all, is another way of understanding and making sense of the present and approaching the future. This new museum is part of the Victims of Communism Memorial Foundation, which was authorized by a unanimous act of Congress and signed into law by President Bill Clinton in 1993 and then started in 1994. The Victims of Communism Memorial Foundation is an educational, research, and human rights nonprofit organization dedicated to ensuring that all, especially our rising generations, know the accurate and disastrous history, ideology, and legacy of communism. VOC recently celebrated its 15th anniversary of the dedication of the Victims of Communism Memorial, which is located between the National Mall and Union Station. Thousands visit the National Memorial each year, and VOC holds annual events such as the Roll Call of Nations and the Tiananmen Square Vigil. VOC offers in-person as well as online programs and curricula to teach the teachers. Our annual national seminar for middle and high school educators is held in July, and our new expanded curriculum targeted for high school students will launch later this fall. VOC conducts regional research on historical and present day subjects. Part of its current work is disclosing and analyzing the Xinjiang police files which document the Chinese Communist Party's ongoing genocide in Northwest China. VOC's independent research has helped the United States and other countries and organizations to establish and declare that genocide determination. I'd like to say a special thank you to Secretary Pompeo. He really deserves so much on this for leading the charge on the US government side. And thank you, Jillian K. Melchior, for interviewing VOC scholars and meticulously reporting on China, Hong Kong, and now Ukraine. <laughs> VOC makes Witness Project short documentaries, each of which features a victim who has resisted at great personal cost and triumphed against communism. VOC annually marks the National Day for the Victims of Communism, and 14 U.S. states have recognized or are in the process of recognizing Victims of Communism Memorial Day on November 7th. Two states have passed, and another is considering additional legislation to require schools to educate about the crimes of communism. So Jennifer, how should we go about adding Colorado to this growing list? In a special way, VOC recognizes individuals and groups who fight for freedom and against totalitarianism with its two highest awards, the Truman Reagan Medal of Freedom and the Dissident Human Rights Award. The latter was most recently awarded in July during America's annual Captive Nations Week. The First Lady of Ukraine, Olena Zelenska, was with us to accept the Dissident Human Rights Award on behalf of the people of Ukraine. The Victims of Communism Museum is the biggest project to date of the Victims of Communism Memorial Foundation. Our dedication on June 8th was 73 years to the day of the publication of George Orwell's 1984, and 40 days, 40 years rather, to the day of President Ronald Reagan's address to the British Parliament. In this essential Cold War speech, Reagan offered both a sophisticated analysis of communist totalitarianism 
and the outlines of a serious plan to defeat it. His remarks are best remembered for the line deliberately adapted from Trotsky about leaving Marxism-Leninism on the ash heap of history. Reagan also borrowed from an updated Churchill. From Stettin on the Baltic to Varna on the Black Sea, the regimes planted by totalitarianism have had more than 30 years to establish their legitimacy, but none, not one regime, has yet been able to risk free elections. Regimes planted by bayonets do not take root. And in recounting an underground joke in the Soviet Union, Reagan showed his support for the solidarity movement in Poland with his trademark humor. Now, apologies here for my delivery. The Soviet Union would remain a one-party nation even if an opposition party were permitted because everyone would join that party. <laughs> with Reagan's words in our ears, I would li like to take you on a brief verbal tour of the museum. In terms of themes developed throughout the museum, visitors will discover that since the Bolshevik coup in 1917, communist regimes, regardless of where and when, commit the same atrocities over and over again. These ideological evils include totalitarian state control, torture, execution, false imprisonment, religious oppression, forced labor camps, communist made famine, secret police, and surveillance. All this has been built on terror, lies, propaganda, and fear that are created and enforced by the Communist Party. The first main gallery, with the theme of revolution, chronologically spans from the publication of Marx and Engels' Communist Manifesto through the death of Lenin. Visitors will learn about the Bolshevik Revolution and the communist terror inflicted by Vladimir Lenin and his party comrades in Soviet Russia. In a film that physically draws one in, they will cheer the heroic resistance to communism that prevented the Soviet Red Army from taking over much of Europe after World War I. The second main gallery, with the theme of repression, exposes communist atrocities from the mid-1920s through World War II, including Joseph Stalin's great terror and purges, the expansion of the gulag, and many millions of deaths and disruptions through collectivization, famine, massacres, and deportations. Visitors will experience personal stories from the Holodomor in Ukraine to communist show trials in the USSR, Czechoslovakia, Poland, and Hungary. With art by survivors and their families, a haunting gulag film about forced labor camps in the Soviet Union, China, Vietnam, North Korea, and Cuba, conveys the universal and repeated qualities in communism's crimes. The third main gallery, with the theme of resistance, chronologically covers from the start of the Cold War to the present. Here, visitors will find out that communism and its atrocities went global, from Europe to Asia, from Latin America to, Asia, to Africa. They will once more witness every day as well as extraordinary resistance to communism. In a hands-on interactive display, visitors will come face to face with the nearly impossible choices that people must make every day when they live under communism. This is the gallery we'll visit, where visitors will view the map film depicting the battle between communism and the forces of freedom behind the iron and bamboo curtains and in the West, and I have brought it from Washington for you to watch. As visitors leave the, main, the third main gallery, they will be immersed in the exhibit Remember Us, with over 250 victims of communism from across time and around the world. By victims, we at VOC mean all those who have been persecuted, repressed, harmed, or killed by communism. Representative categories of resilient heroes include dissident, freedom fighter, martyr, writer, scholar, artist, philosopher, clergy member, politician, 
and athlete. The Victims of Communism Museum also hosts visiting, rotating exhibits. Our first such exhibit showcases the Tiananmen Square protests and massacre of 1989, and it was put together by students, survivors, and supporters of the protests. The curator of Tiananmen 1989, himself a student protester who was hunted by the communists and deemed a number one enemy by, in the PRC, has been conducting personal tours. The exhibit clearly and compellingly presents the truth to all, including those from China. And on that last point, Chinese visitors tell VOC staff that they are learning facts for the first time about 1989 and its aftermath since the Chinese Communist Party denies and covers up everything. And visitors will spend time with a unique art collection at the Victims of Communism Museum. Nikolai Getman, who was, like many, sent to the Gulag for fabricated reasons, survived. An artist, he later painted in secret his memories of the Gulag. VOC is fortunate to have the whole collection of 50 pieces, which has been termed the visual counterpart to Alexander Solzhenitsyn's Gulag Archipelago. The first rounds of feedback about the museum have been emphatically positive, even emotional. Survivors of communism from multiple countries have needed to excuse themselves to regain their composure in the lobby or restrooms before returning to the main galleries. Government officials from formerly communist countries have shared that they are moved that it is in the United States that finally a museum has been made for all the victims of communism. In turn, I was especially edified by my tour with a deputy prime minister and an ambassador to the United States from a formerly communist state who told their stories of growing up under Soviet totalitarian rule, fighting and defeating it, and then helping to build their post-communist democracy. It turns out that they have been friends since elementary school, and they have worked together for decades. Meanwhile, more than one American friend, and not all have had a personal connection to a victim of communism, has asked where the tissue boxes are located. Before the museum officially opened, VOC gave its first tour to a school group. These were seventh and eighth graders from a Washington, D.C. charter school. They knew nothing about communism or its victims, but they were excited for a field trip. Their teacher is Cuban-American, and she had found out about VOC. Our director of academic programs took the students through the museum, along with one of our witness project subjects. And that witness's story further brought to life the exhibits, films, and artifacts. David Smolonsky Urosa is a fourth generation victim of communism. His great grandfather's lumber mill was seized and nationalized in the Soviet Union. Grandparents on both sides fled Soviet Ukraine and reached Cuba. When David's father was a teen, his family escaped Cuba and made it to Venezuela. <laughs> there David was born and grew up and was elected a municipal mayor of Caracas. He opposed Chavez and he opposes Maduro. Like the previous generations of his family, he had to leave home. Now he fights from exile in the United States to free his country. Like our museum, he is living history. The charter school teacher said that her students talked about the museum for days after their visit. They were both educated and inspired. I invite you all to visit the Victims of Communism Museum the next time you are in Washington, D.C. Please, please spread the word. The museum and VOC's broader educational efforts against communism and socialism will only succeed because of support from people like you. Please bring your families, friends, colleagues, students, everyone you can think of, those who agree with you, those who disagree with you. 
I mentioned that a central refrain at the museum is remember us on behalf of all the victims of communism. Our goal for the visitor experience is that everyone leaves both remembering the victims and rejecting communism. And we hope this means that every US visitor who tours the museum says, yes, I understand, and never hear. Thank you.